All right, everybody. Welcome back to North Florida Gun Guy. This is Aaron again. I'm with Sam. Say hi, Sam. Hi. And today we're going to do another edition of uh, Never Shot a Milsurp. But Sam has shot Milsurps before, but he's never shot any straight poles. So today for Sam, I have my M9530 on the left and my Swiss K31 on the right. And we'll be using surplus ammunition for both. Um, Bulgarian surplus from 1938 for the M9530 and Swiss GP11 from the 70s for the Swiss K31. Now I've given Sam no tips on how to shoot either of these rifles except for basic safety on uh, the safety and the basic mechanisms of the rifle. So we're going to film him shooting, uh, loading shooting, and uh, we'll get his impression afterwards. Sam, which one would you like first? Uh, I'll shoot the Swiss first. Going with the Swiss. All right, so I do have a K31 stripper clip, so Danny can shut up about not loading by a stripper clip. So, Sam, here you are. Oh, did we already have an issue? A little bit. Let's try and double load. Oh, it wasn't pushed down all the way, maybe. Yeah. There Get it. Go. There we go. That's all six. All right, now it's time for the M9530. I have five rounds of 8x56R, fresh from 1938. Whenever you're ready. Give it a good jerk. Was that it? Yep. Well, the round, the clip didn't eject out the bottom, uh, but yeah, sometimes those clips are a little tight in there and they just don't come out all the way. All right. All right, Sam, so we're going to go through. Uh, some of the uh, key things from each rifle and uh, first off first impressions for each one what do you think of the K31? The K31 I uh, really liked the smoothness of the action uh, the loading was excellent um, you can tell very easily whether or not it's safe or not mm -hmm. just by the orientation of the bolt ring um, had good kick and what do you think of the trigger? That's a lot of people like the trigger of the K31. Yeah, it was smooth throughout. Mm -hmm. had, a, had a very predictable breakaway point. Mm -hmm. so. Now you did mention something about the sights. You had some issues? Yes. Um, I've shot primarily Mausers and the K31 sight is 
a little different. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure how to describe it, but it was just harder for me to be able to figure out where mm -hmm. the gun was pointing and where I was shooting. Mm, okay. Let's move on to the uh, M9530. What do you think of it? Uh, just go from the beginning to the end. So first impression, action, loading, everything. The loading, um, it was a little bit interesting. End blocks, you know, you have to kind of press down and see if it's, if you've actually loaded it mm -hmm. or if it's going to try and throw the clip back out at you. Um, not my favorite. I will uh, say that these do have a very nice click when they yeah. are locked in place yes. as opposed They're to some other ones. Better than Carcanos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, the, uh, the safety, you know, it, it makes sense. It's easy. You do kind of have to reach up to get to it. Mm -hmm. Um, the kick, it has a good amount of kick, but it's not unmanageable, mm -hmm. I feel like. It's not um, the worst you've ever experienced? No. Mm. <laughs> um, other than being able to, it, having a sight closer to what I'm used to, mm. and being able to figure out where I'm shooting and be able to hit the target, um, the only other thing which really stood out to me is something that I, I didn't like is this uh this sling loop here mm -hmm. it's kind of like almost in your face yes and it's just kind you, of you almost have annoying. to sit back a little further on the m9530 mm -hmm. and and put your cheek a little further back yeah um and it is something i've noticed especially if we try to do rapid shooting otherwise you'll just hit yourself yeah and uh, what do you think about the differences in the in the bolts between the M9530 and the K31? The M9530 is is pretty well known for being very sticky. Yeah, I really like the Swiss bolt more. Mm -hmm. um, it's it has nice clear delineations as to when you're, you know, you've reached the end and pushing it all the way forward into battery. Um, the M95 is there. You don't quite have that same. The same clear markers as to when you've actually got it chambered all the way. All right, so I'm going to reveal something to uh, Sam that he didn't realize at the time when he was shooting. Because I, as I said, we did we gave him no tips. Uh, flip the rear side up on the uh, not the K31, the uh, M95. Flip it up and move that slider up. That's actually your up close shooting at the bottom there. Oh. Uh, when it's flipped down, the battle site is actually uh, 300 meters. Okay. So, the fact that you were able to hit three out of five is actually quite impressive, uh, because you didn't know that starting off. That that bottom site there is actually 100 meters. Okay. So, uh, it's very difficult for somebody new to shooting those uh, because they'll think they're just inaccurate garbage. But that's why they'll tend to shoot very high at first, is because those battle sites are rated a lot higher than most people are used to. Okay. So, uh, that's another thing. The other thing is, I wanted to let everybody know, he didn't experience any issues except for that one time where the bolt stuck. Um, I believe that's due to the ammo, not due to the rifle itself. I've never had any issues with any of my reloads sticking. Um, I have worked on this bolt, uh, not any kind of machine work, but I have uh, cleaned it polished it, it, lubricated it as much as I can. It is pretty smooth compared to when I first got it. Uh, the, uh, the big thing for these is it's a straight back and forth action. If you're used to shooting a turn bolt, you're going to try to put lateral force on it when you try to pull it back and it will stick. Uh, go ahead and try to pull that back while you're trying to pull the N95 back like you're trying to uh, open a regular Mauser. Feel yeah. the difference? Yeah, it sticks a lot. It sticks so much and see yeah. it's catching. Yeah, and then, but if you just go straight back and forth, it's much different. Mm -hmm. And that's a that's another issue a lot of people have when they first get these rifles, especially the N95. The K31 does not do that as much. It is a much tighter action. It doesn't have that kind of play. So, but the N95 gets that reputation, I think, for two reasons. The bolts are dirty, and people are used to shooting turn bolts, so they're trying to put lateral force, and it's causing it to stick on the way out. Well, that was it. So, what would you say is your favorite of the two? Honestly put, I really like the uh, M95. Really? I, I like I like the character of these rifles. Um, I love the recoil. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit of a recoil junkie. Um, 
But they'll definitely get that with the M95 versus the K31. Mm -hmm. 7.5 by 5.5 Swiss in that large of a rifle is not really going to have much of a kick. Yeah. Um, and then versus 8 by 56R and a much shorter, as you can even see, um, the, I'll just do to a profile here, the, the M95-30 is a much shorter rifle, even though they're both considered carbines. So, uh, that was it. So really the N95-30 is your choice. All right. Hey guys, I'm filming this after the shoot with Sam. Uh, there were some things that I realized afterwards that I didn't get on camera that Sam had and I talked about with the K31 and the M95-30 and I wanted to include that in the video because he had said something that was very interesting to me so I just want to make sure that gets included. The first thing was uh, we both agree that the K31 is extremely smooth and very very pleasant to operate. It's a very good bolt action rifle uh, but at the same time it it just doesn't have very much character to it. I, I don't know how to describe that feeling. Uh, Sam and I both shared that opinion. It's it's almost too good. As, as weird as that is to say that it's it's too good of a rifle. If you wanted something like that, that's, that's right up your alley and I, I don't think I'll ever get rid of mine uh, for that reason but at the same token I don't love it as much as some of my other ones just because the the character just feels too smooth and mechanical it's just not it's just not warm and I don't know how to describe it other than that the other thing that Sam said that really struck out to me was that before shooting the rifles today he said that if he had come across them in a pawn shop and they were priced similarly he would have picked up the K31 any day but now he said that after shooting them he'll take the M95, either the M95-30 or whatever version that he tends to stumble across. So that's a big win for me in my book that he's picked a rifle that I really love. So uh, that's that's one of, something, there's two things I wanted to share with you and I also wanted to share with you guys that I do have some more footage from uh, Sam and I's uh, get together. We uh, shot a bunch of rifles. Not everything I filmed, but I did film most of them. So uh, stay tuned for an upcoming video where I shoot, uh, Sam and I both shoot my Siamese Mauser for the first time. Uh, Sam shoots for the first time an L1A1 and uh, the 1895 Nagant revolver. He shoots in a 1944 version of it with surplus ammo. And then he also shoots for the first time an M57, which is the Yugoslavian version of the um, TT33. Stay tuned for that in the future.